Hi, my name is Ken Colby. I'm the author of Laser Photo Wizard. Today we're going to talk about the version 4 of the Laser Photo Wizard. Now the whole purpose of this program is to take a black and white photo as shown and turn it into something that a laser can engrave. Now most lasers can't engrave uh, grayscales. They, they can only uh, do a series of black and white dots. So somehow we have to translate the photo into a series of black and white dots. The simplest way of doing this is called sketch. And there you find all the major edges and you either have just pure black dots um, and white, basically where the edges are. A more sophisticated way of doing it is called Floyd Steinberg. Um, here you try to keep the gray level. And because of the display, it's sort of hard to see what's going on. So rather than looking at the dots themselves, well, first of all, we can we can expand the photo at any time by hitting this plus. And you can see that there really is method to their madness. However, it's a lot easier. We have a thing called a gray photo. And what that does is it combines a lot of, of the dots that are in a local area so they can pre be presented on this low resolution screen. And to, probably the one I use the most is called Photo. And the reason for that is when you engrave on wood, you don't really have a ton of contrast. So this is kind of what it would look like on wood. Now the difference between Floyd Steinberg and Colby is Colby just tries to uh, put a little more detail into the image. And you can see that. Let's go back to the, the dots. We go back to the dot display and blow it up again. You can see the Colby shows the eyelashes and the Floyd Steinberg just kind of mushes them together. So that's why we invented the Colby. The, the difference is Colby tries to consider uh, the dark areas versus the light areas and not just make sure that the area is uh, totally grayscaled. Uh, the disadvantage of the Colby algorithm is it tends to be a little grainier. So you can see here it looks kind of grainy, where this one looks nice and smooth. Uh, that graininess tends to disappear when you're actually engraving, but those are the trade-offs. And the last one, remember we had sketch? Well, the big problem in, in engraving, particularly on wood, is it's very low contrast. So again, if we go back to our, our photo mouse display, you can see that this would engrave very well on wood because it's basically black and white. Whereas Colby, uh, it's kind of kind of not too much contrast. So we do Colby and Sketch. This is my solution in version 3. And you can see that's going to engrave pretty well. But you lose a little bit of the realism. So those are the basic algorithms to, uh, to use. Now what are the, all these settings for? Um, basically, let's go back to the black and white image. You can change the conversion factors. For example, this skin is red, so if you want skin to be lighter, you can pump the red up. Okay. If you want things to be maybe more contrasty, you can go with the blue, maybe just a little red. But by and by and large, the the, the original settings are pretty good. I, I don't usually mess with these much. <clears throat> Uh, as far as sketch goes, I usually leave the sketch on normal. Occasionally, if um, you know, depending on your photo, there's a lot of edges you might want to play with thin or thick, um, but they're not too significant. These apply to the output. Invert will invert it. So if you're uh, going to um, engrave on, say, stone, and you want the black to be white, then um, you can invert the, the image. Mirror is, if you're going to engrave on plexiglass on the back of it, you can mirror the image. So you look through the plexiglass. And um, vectorized sketch is another one that's not used too often. But if you have a very simple sketch, 
uh, you can vectorize it and let uh, you know do do vector scaling and whatever else you need to do. Again, I don't use this one too often, but now with version four, we we introduce this new concept called smart contrast, and I'm very excited about smart contrast. Uh, it really makes <coughs> excuse me, it really makes a difference uh, in terms of the quality of the lazing uh, that you get. So uh, let's go back to our favorite, where we can actually look at the black and white. So if we do mild engrave, mild enhancing, you can see that uh, the edges have been slightly enhanced. And that's the whole idea about smart contra contrast. It looks at the edges and the surrounding areas and tries to build a contrast based on that. A strong contrast, you can see we're starting to get changes in the face. A very strong contrast is almost like sketch. It, uh, it's just, you know, almost black and white. So again, these are three, three settings that you can use. <clears throat> However, if you want, you can go to the more advanced settings. So the contrast level is how much contrast there is. The smart contrast radius is how wide you, uh, you want the effect to go. So you can see here we have high contrast, but not, not very wide. And so you can play with these if you want. Um, I put the radio buttons in because it's, it was just too many settings, and I was afraid people would get confused. So let's take a look if we go to Colby now on wood, and we look at how it engraved. It's kind of not too exciting. But even if we just go up to mild contrast, you can see it's starting to look a lot better or we can even do better with strong. So now we have a very engravable piece um, for wood and uh, other things that have a low contrast output. So this smart contrast I think is, um, I don't know, you, you have to play with it, but I just think it's really a breakthrough and uh, you can combine it with uh, sketch as well. So if you go to sketch and you don't have any increase, but if you do even a mild increase, you can see how much better the sketch gets. Okay, let's try some other things. So of course we need to be able to load images. So let's load this uh, image of the cross and a guy holding it. And I think we'll output Colby and mild. And that should look pretty good. But well, we want to put some text in here, so we need to make it maybe a little smaller and move it around. So we can move it with the mouse, but just for now, let's take a look at scale. Scale shows you how the image fits within the output size that you selected. So we're going to make it just slightly smaller. And now, uh, I think that's pretty good. And now we want to put some text in here. So we go to effects and we have labels, which are simple text, just easy to put in. But we're going to go with the fancy. If you buy the pro version, you can do this unlimited text. So we'll do add text. And we need to find some text, which I just happen to have here. Okay, and paste that in. And let's pick a better font. So you can see you got whatever fonts are on your computer is um, let's go with brush stroke. Okay. And now with this thing you can move it around and maybe size a little bit. That's nice, but maybe I'd like to edit it and make it a little bolder. So we can pick bold. Okay. So now we're ready to engrave it. But let's say that we actually wanted to cut, cut the edges. And this is a, a new effect. We have a framing effect, so we could just do a square frame. And we don't want it to be too thick. 
Okay, so that would be a frame. Um, but new in the newer versions, we can actually use the frame to cut the output, so it actually creates a vector for cutting. Okay, and we're going to just take it way down, almost to the edge. And I like to add, you can add a rounded edge to a square frame. Let me see what that looks like. So there you go. So you can see the rounded edges. So now this is ready to engrave. And what it'll do is it'll output the um, image. And if it's a thin enough substrate, like quarter inch wood or whatever, it'll then go around and, and cut that out. And this is what I do a lot with these little, I like to use uh, pre-finished maple plywood that's a quarter of an inch thick. And uh, the laser burns off the finish and blackens the background. And that just gives a really nice output. You'll see a lot of those samples on my website. OK, so what else can we do? Well, let's load another image. So do our girl here. Here we go. OK. And again, we'll do, let's do sketch. So let's say we, we uh, do the sketch of strong. And you can see that's creating a lot of, uh, let's go back to mild, it's probably too much. Okay, so you can see there's now just a few little dots here. So if we want, we can go into the editor. And this editor particularly works the best with Sketch, I have to admit. And we can make the image smaller. And we can start erasing these parts that we don't like. So that's one way to do it. Now once you use the, the editor is what we call a bitmap editor. So once you edit it, you have to save it or print it. So we'll go back. And now we can save or print this image. OK. But if we make any change to the image, like for example, I just moved it a little bit, you'll see that that comes back. Um, now we have another thing that we can do. Uh, to make skin look better. And that's an effect that probably not too many people use, but I use it a lot, particularly now that, uh, well, let me show you. If we go back to the photo mouse, not photo mouse, sorry, the gray mouse, and we did Colby. See how our skin looks a little kind of weird? Well, we can go to Effects, Smooth, and we can add just a little extra makeup, and we can smooth our skin, and hopefully that'll make the effect look better. Yeah, did you see it? It went by pretty quickly, but you know, I'll, I'll be dramatic here. We probably wouldn't do it this much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did you see how our face turned white? So now this is really looking great. Um, and you can do that. Unfortunately, of course, it only works on people, but most photographs are of people. And if we looked at how that would look on wood, there we go. So I've shown you the editor and the adjustments. Um, I think for a minute we should talk about image sizes because you, in some cases now the printer, you have to match the output image size to the printer. And on some engravers, the X is fixed, like on this universal laser I have, it's 500 dots per inch. So I would have to pick a 500 dot per inch, which I don't seem to have here. Anyways, let's say I don't have a 500 dot per inch. So I have to go to Setup, Utilities, and I can edit image sizes, and I can add a 500 dot per inch image here. OK? And, uh, Unfortunately, you have to stop and restart the system. So I think that's a pretty good overview. You can always go to the Help Index and take a look at the basic concepts. And every section has a, has a help field. Uh, I encourage you to use that. 
Okay, so that's the end of this video, but there's going to be another video right after this. Uh, it shows a really great example using some of the more advanced features. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we're going to try something a little more difficult. We're going to create a square ornament. So what I did is I selected 6x6300 six six as the image size, and I loaded the little girl. Sorry, I did this in the background. I had a little uh, couple of files missing I needed to go get. But anyways, here we go. Um, so now if we were to laser this on a regular piece of wood, for example, we would get the output uh, wherever it's black, it would burn the wood. But we're going to do this on plexiglass. So we're going to invert it, and we're going to put it on the back of the plexiglass, so we're going to mirror it. And of course, we're going to go with good old Colby sketch. Now, the problem is that we really don't want wherever there's um, white, the laser won't do anything. Or wherever there's black, the laser won't do everything. Whenever there's white, it's going to be inverted, so it's going to burn all this. We really don't want to do that. We want a, a clear plastic uh, snowflake. That's what we're going to do. So what we want to do to achieve that is we're going to add an overlay, which in this case is just a little square circle. And so what that's going to do is that's going to cause the laser, because this is black and inverted, let's make it a little bigger, because this is black and it's going to be inverted, then the laser is not going to show this at all. It's just going to show a tiny circle with the picture of the girl lasered in it. Okay, and so if this was all we did, we'd get a little round circle with a picture of whoever you want inside. But what we want to do is we want to put it inside the snowflake. So we go to our text and images and we add an image. We're going to add this snowflake image. What we don't want to add as an image, we want to add it as a vector so that we can cut it. We want to scale it so it fits. Give it a second. And there you go. So what this is doing is wherever it's red, it's going to cut. Um, that's how I have it set up. And the, on my laser, which is an old ancient epilogue laser that I repaired. Um, whatever a vector is, you can set it to, to cut at various levels. Um, in this particular case, uh, I'm just going to set it to, to cut, and then it's going to laser the inside of it. So unfortunately, where I have my recording studio, I don't have my laser. So you just have to trust me that this works. But we can I can show you an image of what the output looks like. So that's basically what the output will look like when it's finished. But I didn't mean that. Well, OK. All right. So that gives you the idea. And um, I really appreciate you watching the video. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Please send me, uh, if you make do some uh, interesting work with the product, I, I could sure use some more samples. And I thank you for your time.